G'day YouTube. I've taken a couple of cool photos recently and uh, I'll show you those later with the Rasa 8. But before I do, this video is going to be all about workflow. So I'm going to step through my workflow, which can be broken down into four discrete categories. Planning, acquisition, calibration and processing. Now these categories really apply to anyone in any industry and any type of endeavour. Uh, for example, if you are an Instagram model, uh, planning might be choosing the right kind of hair or shirt or setting. Acquisition, of course, is taking a bunch of photos so that you can choose the right one. Calibration would be going through that stack of images that you have and then picking the right ones that you'd like to then go on to processing. And in processing, you, of course, apply that wonderful Instagram filter and get ready to publish and watch those likes roll in. But astrophotography is just a little bit more complicated. So we're going to go through my workflow and a few steps that I go through in my workflow. But really this applies to anyone. I'm going to make this as software independent as I can so that these processes really apply to whatever software you choose to do your work in. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Apologies for the background noise. Apparently Chris Hemsworth is building a mansion next door. So anyway, planning. Planning is always the first step. You want to pick your target. Uh, picking the target is usually as simple as, well for me, just looking up in the sky at the time of night that I want to capture something. And I just use my planetarium app to basically just look around and see what's available. Of course you can do this with browsing through forums or there's all number of software applications which will help you with the planning phase and tell you when things are high and that sort of thing. Once you've found something you like you can move on to planning your framing of the shot and what filters to use and that sort of thing. So for checking out the field of view I use Sequence Generator Pro. Now you can do this in Stellarium or whatever once you set up your equipment profile. Uh, it has a nice idea of what the frame is going to be so you can set up your exposures. You can even create multiple tiles in this one to stitch together a panorama mosaic of some kind but it's always good in the planning phase to have an idea of what you're going for and how you would like it framed of course weather is one thing to plan for you want to make sure you are shooting on a moonless night and that it is nice and clear uh, I use the Bintel weather forecast because I made it and as you can see it's all green and there's no moon right now so I am all good to go and you also want to check that your target is actually nice and high Anything that you're shooting straight up is going to be clear and it's going to look better. So when you're planning your target, make sure that what you've got is high and all that grease. And of course, you always want to make sure you have enough beer for your imaging session. I recommend Hawke's Lager, as in Bob Hawke, the greatest Prime Minister this country has ever seen. <laughs> Vote May 18th. Authorised by N. Carroll, Australian Labor Party, Canberra. Acquisition. Acquisition is where you actually get the frames. So you want to make sure you're all set up. Thankfully, I don't have to set up because I have an observatory. <laughs> but I still have to come out and make sure the cables aren't tangled, make sure everything's good to go, turn it on, pull the last alignment up, basically get ready to acquire the images. Polar alignment is out of the scope of this video. It can definitely be deserving of its own video. A lot of the steps in this workflow video have their own videos to go back and refer to. But of course you want to make sure you're polar aligned and then get your guiding going. Make sure your guiding is calibrated, ready to go. You want to make sure you're in focus, of course. And I use my trusty feather touch clothes peg solution there for manual focus. And of course, check your images at the start of the run. There's nothing worse than going through a whole night and realizing that your stars were just slightly out of focus at the end. And all of that data is pretty much worthless, except maybe for Instagram. Ah! So make sure those first few frames that come down you check and double check that they're in focus and then you come back and make sure that you check focus at least once an hour. As the temperature changes the focus is going to shift and you want to make sure that you refocus and keep it good all night long. Of course at some point during the night when the scope is horizontal and the target that you're looking at crosses the meridian you're going to want to do a meridian flip unless you're not pushing too far back into your limits and you're not going to crash anything you can just keep going. But if you have to do a meridian flip, you want to make sure it's done early on in the night so you can just keep that last run going strong. Also during the acquisition phase, you might want to be taking your calibration frames. 
uh, that's darks if you don't do like a dark library that you reuse you might want to do dark straight away after the session uh, same for flats flats you need to do almost every time unless you don't change the rotation or anything of your setup with the rasa sky flats are meant to be the thing to do i'm too lazy to do flats but this is generally something that happens during the acquisition phase and then of course there's the long and arduous step of packing up going home The next step of course is doing your calibration so that means taking your calibration frames like your bias flats and darks and then applying them to each of the exposures that you've taken over the night uh, this takes a little bit of time but it's well worth the effort because you get cleaner images overall uh, now calibration also refers to going through and removing the images that didn't work so blink your images look for ufos but also look for the bad subs remove them some people also like to do grading which is where you can rank the images now if you have the luxury of having a lot of data and this is something that planetary guys do all the time is rank all of those frames by quality and then only stack the best 50 percent or something like that however much data you can afford to throw away sometimes it's better to have less data that's good than it is to just have hours and hours of average data <laughs> And then finally, we get on to processing. Now, of course, processing is something that everyone does differently, and this workflow is going to be different for everyone. But this is a general step-by-step -step through that workflow. First, you do your star alignment or star registration, and that basically just means making sure that all the stars in the images line up so that when you do go to stack them, they stack up perfectly. Then there is stacking itself. You might have some decisions to make here about the kind of algorithm that you'd like to apply, uh, depending on the software that you use essentially just stacking and averaging those pixels out then of course there's stretching the image uh, most software packages have an auto stretch um, pix insights is really good but you might want to tweak that a little as well and move those black and white sliders around to get that contrast that you want if you're using one shot color then you go on to your color calibration step make sure that all the colors are even and that you have a nice gray black background most of us get into star reduction at this point now star reduction is necessary it's not something that you're doing to remove the truth or alter the image whatsoever stars are literally little pinpricks of light in the sky but they blow out on our sensor to all the pixels around the actual size of the star is, is a lot less than what we get in our results so you do want to go through that star reduction process I personally use the star mask and morphological transformation in PixInsight to achieve that. And if you're using multiple filters, you wanna make sure the star reduction is roughly similar on all of them, so the stars line up and are about the same size in each run. If you're doing narrowband, at this point, you might get to the color combination. I talked about that in the last video, but basically you wanna start merging your R, G, and B layers, depending on what filter you want for which color, and then laying them over your luminance layer as well. At this point you want to go onto levels and curves so that's adjusting the image properties to maybe bring in that black point a little bit maybe keep it wide maybe make it a bit brighter but this is the finer tuning of the image then i move on to cropping so you might have um, unclean edges that you want to crop out or you might just want to get in closer to the target you photographed at this point you do the crop then i move on to resizing the image for screen or print now you might have noticed i haven't applied any noise reduction or sharpening at this point and you can and many people do well before this point uh, but as um, someone who works with graphics a lot in my day job i find that applying things like noise reduction and sharpening is something that you should do at the very end at the size that it's intended for so at the size um, for social media i use 2048 pixels wide and i resize the image to that before i go on to noise reduction and sharpening and i find that the image is a lot cleaner and people see it pixel for pixel perfect because if you do those steps before you do the resize the computer algorithm that does the resize then has to make decisions about where those edges are where the gradients are and you've actually lost a little bit of quality at that point so for noise reduction i happen to like the topaz denoise tool but there is a they do have an ai denoise that i'd like to try out and for sharpening i just use smart sharpen but there are more sophisticated things like deconvolution in pix insight and wavelet layers and that sort of thing that you might want to try as well and finally it's at this point you can export and share your image and i'd really love to share the images that i've been taking with you recently it's not a school night i don't have to work i've done my essay on local groups for university so i've got a bit of breathing space just waiting for my target to clear the palm tree that I actually cut leaves off so that i can get a better view and uh hopefully i'll have some data by the end of the night and when my kids jump on me at uh, 6 30 in the morning 
I'll be uh, pretty zoned out, but I'll have data, and so I'll be happy dad. Well, I imaged till 4am last night because conditions were crystal perfect. New moon, no wind, it was perfectly clear and I just kept getting good data and good data so I just couldn't stop. Um, so now I've had three hours sleep and uh, it's taken it out of me. Anyway, let's process this image. I hope you enjoyed this video about workflow. Uh, on a personal note, it's been really great to hit 10,000 subscribers. I can't really believe that I'm up to this point. Been a bit more focused in the last year and making my videos a bit better presented and uh, trying to pretend to be a host. I hope that comes across. Uh, please keep tagging me in your images. I love to see it when I see your work and the stuff that I've helped you with. And I'll continue to try and share some of those at the end of each video as well. Good luck with your astrophotography and I hope you're not throwing all your money into the fire. Remember everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. Bye.